different causes of leg pain that I see. Number one, pain from varicose veins. Number two, pain from blocked arteries. Number three, arthritic pain. Number four, radicular pain, pain that comes from the spinal column, from the nerves. And then number five would be peripheral neuropathy, so burning pain from the feet. So the first cause of pain that we should discuss are varicose veins. So varicose veins have a broad range of symptoms that they can cause. They are very variable from individual to individual. Not everyone gets pain, but some people get terrible pain. The most common symptoms from varicose veins are heavy, aching, tired legs, worse in hot weather, worse towards the end of the day. Some people get an itch around their shin region. Other people get restless legs at night, like they're kind of jumping around the bed. And some people also get cramps. Those are the symptoms of varicose veins. People notice them more towards the end of the day and their veins will bulge more towards the end of the day. The veins will bulge more in hot weather and they also bulge more when you're well hydrated. So some people come in this evening and say, oh, my veins aren't visible today. It's not in your head. Sometimes they're proud and prominent with right lighting and good hydration in hot weather. Sometimes they're barely visible and they um, sink back in under the skin. The next common cause of pain is from arterial pain. When someone has blocked arteries, their muscles are not getting enough blood when they walk. The way the pain presents is, it's, if it's in the calf, it's a cramp. If it's in the thigh, from arteries blocked even higher up in the arterial tree, it's a weakness or a fatigue ability. So they say that they go for a walk and it's a predictable distance that brings on the pain. It might be 50 meters. Someone can walk 50 meters in a straight line on a flat surface and they'll get a cramp in their calf and they have to sit down over the next five minutes, the pain will ease off and they can get up and they can walk again, 50 meters. And they'll often tell you, I can walk to my mailbox before the pain comes off, or I can walk around two blocks around the local shopping center, but then I need to know where the next chair is to sit down because the cramp comes off. That's called claudication. It's arterial pain, it's when the muscles are not getting enough oxygen because the main highway of blood is either narrowed or blocked. Arthritic pain comes about when the joints are worn out. It's typically a loss of cartilage and a loss of joint space, so bone on bone. And as you can imagine, this happens in the hips and the knees, but it can happen in any joint, but in terms of leg pain, it's typically hip and knee. This pain is normally worst in the morning when you first get out of bed, and as you warm up, the pain, the inflammation seems to settle down a little bit with the stress of getting on with your daily activities. The body suppresses the, the, the inflammation. But then when you're rested after being asleep overnight, first thing in the morning, the pain is very severe. The fourth kind of leg pain is that comes about from the spine. This is a really common masquerade for vascular surgeons because it can have lots of overlap with arterial related claudicate pain. Spinal pain presents as someone gets up to walk and they walk a certain distance and they get a shooting pain down the back of their leg. It's usually the buttocks hamstring, calf, and into the sole of the foot. It can be all of those levels, or it can be the individual level or two of those. And it's a shooting pain that goes down the back of the leg, often then relieved by sitting down and resting. When they get up and walk again, the pain comes back. It can be really hard for me even to work out, is it an arterial-related pain, or is it a spinal or radicular pain, like a sciatica? And that's when you enter in the use of ultrasounds and pressure studies to work out, is it an arterial pain? or things like MRI to work out, is there a loss of joint space in the spine or are there burning outgrowths which are compressing nerves that lead to this burning shooting pain down the back of the leg. The final cause of leg pain that I frequently encounter is peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral neuropathy is damage to the peripheral nerves. It occurs in a glove and stocking distribution, so stockings for the feet, gloves for the hand. And it's a burning pain, sometimes a numbness, or sometimes people describe like they're wearing socks when they're not, or that they feel like their feet aren't their own. It can come on in waves, it's always symmetrical, so both legs, left and right. One can be slightly worse than the other, but the symptoms are always in both limbs, and it's limited again to the glove and stocking distribution. Burning, uncomfortable pain that can be really debilitating. The main causes of peripheral neuropathy are number one, diabetes, number two, excessive alcohol consumption, number three, B12 deficiency, often occurs in vegans or vegetarians. And then there's about 15 other causes and they're all extremely rare, things like chemotherapy and other rare neurological disorders. One of my jobs is trying to work out if someone has proof of neuropathy or not. That's best tested with nerve conduction studies done by a neurologist. Well, I think the first pillar of call should always be your general practitioner. 
they are the best person position to take a history of from you, examine your leg, and then try to work out where the pain is coming from. And they can then order the correct investigation and send you to the correct specialist that's going to be able to actually deal with the problem. Varicose veins cause myriad of symptoms and they're often overlooked. So if you do have lots of varicose veins, uh, an incompetence ultrasound study is really worth doing and then get an opinion from a vascular surgeon.